Good morning. I'm Deborah Diamond, and I wanted to speak with you this morning about what is a near-death experience. There seems to be a lot of confusion about what exactly a near-death experience is. You know, part of that is because there's been so much discussion about the light and the tunnel and life reviews. And so I speak to many people who think, you know, I didn't have a life review or I didn't go through a tunnel. Was my experience valid? Well, I wanted to put to rest some of these notions today and explain to you that the elements of the NDE are not definitive in terms of whether or not you've had the experience. Here's how you know if you've had the experience. And this is the definition according to ASSIST and to IONS. And, and here's the definition. It's whether or not you come back from your experience transformed, unable to go back to your previous life. This is really how you can tell because there are many people who've had near-death experiences and have not gone through the tunnel. They've not seen a light. They've not had a life review. But they still have come back transformed and still meet all the qualifications for having a near-death experience. Now, there are other after effects of near-death experience besides transformation, you know, and being unable to go back to your previous life. And I've written a book about that, and there's been much discussion about near-death experience after effects uh, recently. It's become part of the conversation about near-death experiences. When I wrote my book, Life After Near Death, two years ago, there really wasn't much attention focused on near-death after effects. I was, all, I was fascinated by them because there hadn't been much uh, attention focused on them, yet it was a, it's a real issue, and it's one that NDEers have to grapple with. And it's something that deserved and deserves more exploration. Now, what are some of the after effects? And this is another way you can tell whether or not you've had a spiritually transformative experience or you've had a near-death experience. So, you know, there are a number of after effects, and I explore in my book the physiologic and cognitive after effects. And the reason that I focus on those is because they're irrefutable, and they're demonstrable. In other words, you can demonstrate that you've had them. You know, there are after effects such as becoming more spiritual. Many, many people come back from a near-death experience and say, I'm more spiritual than I used to be. Okay, I believe that. It's true. But there's no way to measure it. There are people who come back and say, I'm a medium now. Okay, I, I understand. But there's no way to measure that. It's anecdotal. You know, that's a medical term, anecdotal. That means that's somebody telling you their story. So it's not, there's no scientific conclusion that can be drawn from that. Um, there are some after, other after effects, you know, about, um, that are social, you know, 75%, 65 to 75% of people get divorced after a, a near-death experience because their spouse or partner says to them, you know, honey, if you just stayed the way you were, we were fine. We were doing fine. The problem is they can't, they're not the way they used to be. They've changed. So, you know, there are a number of after effects that uh, have been discussed, but, you know, there's really, it's, it's hard to prove some of them, you know, particularly the spiritual and uh, paranormal after effects. So I was interested in focusing on the physiologic and cognitive after effects. And what are those? So the physiologic include uh, things such as enhanced vision, there are uh, many people who come back with their vision uh, much better than it was prior to the experience, significantly better. Uh, same thing with hearing. And when, you know, I talk about improved hearing or enhanced hearing, I'm not simply referring to being able to hear your friend across the room a little bit better. I'm talking about people who can hear conversations down the street. Um, there are people who come back with enhanced IQ, significantly higher IQ. These are all... Uh, after effects that can be measured. So these people had their IQ or their hearing or their vision tested prior to their near-death experience and then tested again after their near-death experience. So it's irrefutable. There are also some uh, other uh, cognitive after effects, including uh, some people come back with musical ability. Many people who come who were not musical prior to the uh, spiritually transformative or near-death experience, or they come back with artistic ability. So, you know, now what is all this about? It's really an expression of their altered energy. 
people come back from spiritually transformative and near-death experiences with altered energy. And that energy has to go somewhere. It has to be manifested in some way. You know, we carry it around, and if we just carry it around and it's not expressed, you know, it's, it's difficult. So it, it can be expressed in a number of ways. It can be expressed physiologically, cognitively, can be expressed in some other ways as well. So uh, that's really what we're, what we're talking about here. Now, I have seen a number of discussions uh, online and on the internet about near-death experience after effects. And, you know, it's um, one of those things, uh, the result of the internet, where you have um, individuals, again, anecdotally relating what happened to them, uh, which may or may not be a near-death experience after effect. So, and, and it also may or may not be a near-death experience. So you've got to be careful, you know, if you've had uh, something happened to you, uh, some sort of experience that you can't explain, an extraordinary experience, or you think you have after effects from one of these experiences, uh, please be careful about um, taking to heart some of the things that people say on the internet because, you know, uh, that's one person's experience. That doesn't mean that that's the case. Um, I'm a researcher. I've at this point talked to thousands of people who've had uh, extraordinary experiences, near-death experiences, spiritually transformative experiences. Uh, so I, you know, can look at the waterfront, uh, analyze uh, these cases, and you know, draw some conclusions. It's very hard, if not impossible, to draw a conclusion about one case. So you know, just be careful if you're listening to somebody online who said that something happened to them and you draw a conclusion that maybe that's what happened to you. Not always the case. Uh, just put that out there as a, as a disclaimer. Um, and, uh, y you know, again, it's, it's a very important topic. Um, I think we're still very early, early stages in terms of the discussion of near-death experience after effects. I'm pleased to see that there is a discussion ongoing right now because for a very long time, the discussion focused on these anecdotal experiences. I went through the tunnel, I saw a light. And um, well, it's interesting, there's much more to this than we know. And, uh, you know, I think questions have to be asked about, you know, why, why do we have these experiences? What is it that they, they mean? What are we supposed to do with them? Why are so many people having them? And um, that really goes beyond the, uh, the, the light or uh, life review. So, um, you know, I'm happy to answer your questions. You can always contact me through my websites, uh, Deborah Diamond Author, Deborah Diamond uh, Psychic.com. And um, you can always, uh, you know, reach out to me, and I'm happy to hear about, uh, you know, your experiences and try, and try to help. And I hope that my book, Life After Near Death, has helped, has helped you. I've heard from many people who've had experiences, all kinds of experiences, and they say, you know, I never could talk about it, and I wasn't sure what happened, but uh, now the, f the pieces are falling into place. So I'm, I'm very happy if that can, uh, you know, be of some assistance to others, because that's really what I do, and that's uh, what I'm all about. And um, so if I could touch others and touch them in some way that's helpful, um, I, that's, that's just a good thing for everybody, right? So uh, anyway, uh, have, a, have a beautiful day, and uh, uh, it's lovely to see you.